Gerard Mayo in hot water for saying he does see color. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull that up now because I want to discuss it and I want to see if this offends you because it didn't offend me and people. Jimmy Hobbs wrote a great story on Gerard Mayo that you've got to check out. He talked to John Chavis. He talked to Kevin Simon. Really, really good stuff. So uh, please check that out. We love Jimmy Hobbs. He is fantastic. Um, But these comments brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler. Look for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals? The Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. All right, let's pull it up and let's play the so, comment. And is let me this bring the context. <laughs> let me say the context before I do this. This is because it's not what's not played is right before. Right before Robert Kraft was asked about hiring the first black coach in Patriots history. And Robert Kraft said, I don't see color. This was Gerard Mayo's response. And you guys tell me, if it was problematic or not, because I, I have, I think Dave and I agree, and we both have pretty strong thoughts on it. So here's Good what Gerard Lord, Mayo, Gerard Mayo hasn't aged. What, what's <laughs> happening there? That's the same dude I covered. By the way, it is really hard for me to fathom that I covered for his entire career, including his uh, recruitment, that he is now the head coach of the Patriots. I actually thought Jim Bob Cooter would be the first guy that I covered that would be a head coach in, in the NFL. So what did Mayo have to say? So after Robert Kraft said he doesn't see color, here's what Mayo said. I do see color because I believe if you don't see color, you can't see racism. And whatever, whatever happens, black, white, disabled person, I've always, even someone with disabilities, I always, uh, you know, for the most part, people are like, you know, don't, you know, when they're young, they, they kind of make the spot hot. Younger people know what that means. But what I would say is, like, no, I want you to be able to go up to those people and really understand those people. So it goes back to whatever it is, black, white, yellow, it really doesn't matter, but it does matter so we can try to fix a problem that we all know we have. Okay. First of all, it's completely unfair just because he's African-American that he has to be asked about these major social issues. He's a football coach, okay? Second of all, I really liked his answer because, you know, I have several black friends uh, that I've, I've covered through sports and they've remained friends for years, Ron Slay, Fred White, or a, a couple of them. And through getting to know them, I do realize that it's important to see color and realize there's struggle there for minorities that I don't face because I'm the guy who gets all the advantages, right? I'm, I'm middle-aged white guy. That's the guy who gets advantages in our country. So I do try to see color to some extent and empathize with that and what and the struggles that minorities may go through. But I I would never see color in terms of I need to give this guy a shot because he's a minority or I don't want to give him a shot because I don't like minorities, obviously. I mean, you know that about me, Caleb. So... I, th- that's where I stand. I think the decision needs to be based, a hiring decision, off who the best candidate is. And I think Gerard Mayo got put in a really tough, unfair spot. Yeah. And again, it's people are assuming that Gerard Mayo, by saying I see color, he's saying he's racist. That's not what it means to say I see color. What it means to say I see color is I recognize that this person is a different race, but I'm not going to treat them differently just because of that. Dave and I were talking yesterday outside of the Iowa running back in the citrus bowl. (laughs) (laughs) You can pretty much tell if someone's white or black or Asian or their race. Typically there are some exceptions. It does, you no good to pretend you don't see that. Okay. Cause one we've all, first of all, we've all been to comedy shows where people make race jokes. And if you enjoy those, I do. I enjoy Chris rock. I'm sure you enjoy Chris rock. I enjoy Dave Chappelle. I'm sure you enjoy Dave Chappelle. They're making race jokes. If you don't see color, you wouldn't understand those race jokes, but they're funny because they're making them. So you understand you, the, the point of this is not to make decisions based on race or anything like that. The point you're on Mayo is saying is that you should still see it so you can understand where people are coming from. But that does not mean you make any decision based on it. That, you would think, Dave, with the way Twitter went at Gerard Mayo, what, you would think he said he's joining the Nation of Islam and is not going to let any white players on the New England Patriots next year. <laughs> you would think that's what <laughs> <laughs> You would think that's what he said if, uh, if you saw the way people came for him. 
Yeah, I know. I was, I just thought it was bizarre that, um, I, I don't know. To me, you, you would recognize you don't treat anybody different, but don't you recognize what they're going through? I mean, I would also hope that on the flip side, that uh, minorities would look at a guy who, who gets a job, um, and, and say, in most cases, he didn't jump to the front of the line because he was white. I would like that to be the situation in our country. But if they say that, if, and that's the way minorities feel, then I'm going to respect and empathize that because I haven't been a minority for 49 years. I don't really know. There's no way to know, Caleb, which is what makes it so difficult. And I thought that that was what Gerard Mayo was pointing out. And I respect it. I thought it was a great answer. I think he's one of probably the top five smartest guys that I've ever covered. He was kind of quiet. I really never got to know him at Tennessee, but I thought that was a, a fantastic answer. Yeah. And I think that, look, it, it, you've covered Tennessee in certain moments and I've covered it. There were moments, unfortunately, in Tennessee's past where it was hard not to see it. It was hard not to see it when Derek Dooley got the job at Tennessee. I have to be honest. It was hard not to see it when Derek Dooley got hired over Kevin Sumlin or Kippy Brown, who were both eminently more qualified than Derek Dooley to take that job. Were they not in 2010? Yes. And I will I will tell you then that <coughs> pardon me. Um, I think Derek Dooley looking the part, which is middle-aged white guy. I think Derek Dooley looking the part helped him. I do too. There Had is. he been African American with the same record? Um, at Law Tech, I don't think he's Tennessee's head coach. Not a chance in hell he gets that job at that point. And by the way, I say this to someone who doesn't think Kevin Sumlin is that great of a coach now because I've, I think the – well, I don't want to say he was a bad coach. I think the offense has passed Kevin Sumlin by. I think Kevin Sumlin is a guy who had a great ahead of the curve offense and he didn't adapt. And so that's why he got fired at a and But in that moment in 2010, there's no question that Kevin Sumlin was more qualified for that job than Derek Dooley in 2010 and that i say that as someone who rooted for Derek dooley you guys on the message board know this i'm friendlier to Derek dooley than davis <laughs> by a long shot i'm friendlier to Derek dooley than most tennessee fans are quite honestly on that but i Derek do Dooley didn't like dave hooker very much <laughs> yeah uh um uh, yeah, that's true. That I, I, I've heard those stories. And, and I see a point, and, and you know, a lot of people want to bring up one of the things that helped Derek Dooley, was, and this is where it was hard to not see it. What's one thing that helped Derek Dooley, Dave? He was the son of an SEC legend, of a legendary SEC coach, right? Yes, that helped. That helped. Well, guess what? The SEC didn't even hire black coaches until the 1990s. So what black candidate was going to have the chance to be the son of an SEC legendary coach <laughs> at that yeah. point? So this is where I say, this is where it gets tricky to No, you should like, again, Gerard Mayo shouldn't have been, you're right. He shouldn't have had to be asked about being the first black coach of the Patriots history. That's not why he was hired. He's been known as Bill Belichick's mouthpiece basically since he joined the Pats in 2008. That's why he was hired. I do think Robert Kraft didn't think about anything, but Gerard Mayo's bill is just a new young Bill Belichick. Um, so that's I pretty think high standard to hold him to. Right. I, I agree. That's a, that is a pretty high standard. Um, so I think that I don't think what Gerard and I, yeah, we, Dave nor I are going to try to make anything about Gerard Mayo being the first black coach in Patriots history. This is a defense of Gerard Mayo for saying what he said. He didn't say anything. Nothing he said makes him racist guys at all. And no. by the and way, I will, I, this, I will say this too. I think the NFL is still partly racist. I mean, I, I think there are too few, uh, African-American head coaches in the NFL. Um, and I think it's because the guys that make decisions a lot of times are 70 year old white dudes. Um, and I think that I, I thought there was a time where that could change on its own, Caleb, but I don't anymore. I think that has to change with old white dudes dying off. I <laughs> That sounds morbid. But I'm being straight up and honest with you because my generation and the generation below me, I don't want to say they don't see see race. I mean, you see it, but it doesn't affect your decision making process for the most part. You're seeing lower and lower. My like my kids don't even understand racism. They think it's the most bizarre thing in the world, and I think you're going to see that more and more. But I don't think those 70 year old white dudes that made billions in whatever individual job they got. I don't think that 
they're going to suddenly flip and say, oh, I'm going to be proactive and who needs the Rooney rule? I'm just going to hire African-American coaches because I think it's the right thing to do. That's not going to happen. I think, and I want to give credit to, I, I want to give credit to the NFL. I actually think they are making an active effort. I, I It's hard for me to see, say for the NFL, because I've seen some of the hires that are made and things like that. I think they are making an effort. I think there's so much pressure in the NFL where I see it more. I do see it more with major college football programs because Dave, what did we talk about yesterday? College football coaches are hired based on who the boosters can go golfing with. That that's that's who that's that's how coaches are hired in college football. And let's be honest, Derek Dooley is a guy that Jimmy Haslam saw he could could be a golf buddy. Uh, yep, yeah, I think that's part of it. I think that um, I don't think that there are. I think there are situations where there's not a conscientious decision made. Hey, I'm going to hire white dude over black dude because. Um, I'm racist. I don't think that happens. I just think in the NFL, there's kind of a subconscious thought of he looks like a head coach. I've said before, <clears throat> I don't care if you're black, white, uh, Denzel Washington or Brad Pitt. Never hire the good looking coach. Never hire the good looking coach. When the good looking coach stands up there at the podium, your team, your program, you better say, ah, oh, bleep. Because the good-looking coach that wins the press conference is always the one who stinks out loud. Like Cliff Kingsbury? Uh, like Cliff Kingsbury, like Lane Kiffin. He wasn't ready for the job. Now, he'd do okay now. Don't get me wrong. But he kind of He's less good-looking now. <laughs> he's aged. I mean, the, he's not the uglier, though. the better. That Woody <laughs> wouldn't offer. He was one hell of an ugly coach. <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm loving this. The I don't. I think her. I, thought, I. You know. I always thought Spurrier looked pretty good as a coach. You know, had the had the dark hair. Spurrier was a good looking coach, and he was good tired. looking man. I'm not saying that it's the absolute rule. <laughs> I'm just saying that I believe that it is a a factor. Be guy. Dave today. hired me because I'm hot. I hope y'all know that. Oh, and somebody questioned my diversity. We've got two women writers, and I believe Jacob Warren is African American. So there, take that. And uh, I'm hot, so, you know. <laughs> so, so that means you're the one I shouldn't have hired. You don't <laughs> you're No, you're decent looking. That's why you got the job. If you were too hot good guy looking, privilege. <laughs> yeah, if you were like Brad Pitt, I'd be afraid of you. Hey, can I share something real quick? Um, a lady said that I kind of look like Brad Pitt lately. Do you believe that? Really? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Anybody see that? Uh... <laughs> Not okay, really. someone brings up a point though. Butch yeah, Jones looked horrible. I'm gonna pull my shirt tired. up to my abs. How about that? Like Fight Club. Oh my gosh! No, hey, no. Butch Jones looked horrible. He was hired, but he chose to look horrible because he was too stupid to know how to get a right a good haircut. But yeah, like download the Great Clips app. Um, Smoky Mountain Red says Dave is ginger like me. We are minority. We're about to be done with. I heard in 40 years that there won't be any more redheaded because it's a recessive gene. There won't be any more redheads born. Like in 40 years, there's, I'm serious. I'm, it's a recessive gene. I mean, I there, there is my uh, dad has dark black hair. My mom has brown hair. I mean, it cropped up and they said I look like a punk rocker when I was born because my hair was pink because it was thin. And um, yeah, so it's a recessive gene. Us redheads are, are going out. 